I'll have my plants there. Much more fun. Very nice. Good luck. Okay, and we are hello everyone and welcome to our amazing panel discussion with amazing panelists today. Uh, we're gonna talk about test automation trends that we need to look at in closest future. And um, I want to introduce uh, the amazing participants of a panel discussion. And uh, sorry guys, but I'll start from ladies. So uh, first and great speaker today to introduce is Eleanor Kwok. Eleanor is a pre-sales engineer and technical partnership manager. I'll talk about Eleanor a bit more uh, once I will be asking questions, but uh, interesting thing is that she helps uh, a lot of clients to improve testing strategy and speed up their tests using the Jenny Motion Cloud. Uh, Eleanor is from France, from Jenny Mobile. So uh, thanks for joining us, and we are super ready to uh, listen all about the trends that you think about. Uh, let's, uh, Eleanor, say hi. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Okay, uh, cool. So we also have uh, Tomas Carpentier today. I hope that I pronounced it correctly. Yes, yes. Uh, okay, Tomas is a QE manager, also from France, also from Jenny Mobile. Um, I I can't say that you are all tester, but uh, you have like around fourteen years of experience of tackling different challenges in web and mobile and desktop. So I I am really excited to hear all the feedback about the trends that you're going to say. So, hey, Tomas. Hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, OK, uh, thanks. And our last but not the least speaker today is Karim Sederly, um, a senior developer advocate in HashiCorp, the Netherlands. And um, I'm uh, super excited to hear the developer uh, feedback because it's super interesting always to hear you know, the other side, not just like the QA automation, how we think about the QA and what we write in QA, but also the different side because nowadays I think we collaborate a lot around the mission. So I am really looking forward to all the technical feedback that you're going to have. So hey. Hey everyone. Thanks for uh, okay. Us today. <laughs> yeah. So um, I want to start with something that we had before, like let's say you know five, ten years ago, it was extremely easy. We had like Java, Selenium, I think, running on the single machine. Everything was super easy, super trivial. And now the test automation actually has grown completely. And um, I would start with something general. Uh, I want to direct the first question uh, to Tomas. Um, since you're the person who worked with different challenges during a long time, like with desktop and mobile and web, I wanted to ask, for your opinion, like if I would be the person who wanted to start with test automation, like right now, or I would be like the test automation engineer who wants to grow in something like, you know, trendy, what would you advise? Like which languages, frameworks, what to look at, what to think about? Uh, good question. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, maybe we can start with uh, languages, after that with framework and uh, I will answer to what manual queue engineer uh, have to learn. He wants to learn automation, what he should do. So regarding language, uh, I think it depends of uh, your skill, of, of uh, your skill, and also uh, company skills. Because I would say you need to have a discussion with uh, all the team testers and developers to select the most common language you can have in the company. Uh, for example, if you choose uh, Python and other people in the company uh, are some skilled with Java or JavaScript, you, you will be alone in your team. Uh, you will take the risk to not receive a review uh, about your testing code. You will take the risk to do not have answer if you have a language issue. Uh, it's like a, a strategy with all the, te the teams uh, because all uh, languages like Python, Java, Golang, JavaScript can be used. Um, about, and, and, yeah. yeah, no, go on, go on. It's uh, yeah. interesting to think about it. Yeah, uh, about framework. Uh, I think it depends on uh, your, your application. Uh, if the application is developed 
using React Native, it could be easier to, to use the docs as a testing, uh, testing frameworks. If it's a native application and you want to run your test on Android and uh, iOS, uh, you will take a look on uh, Appium. Um, so uh, it's uh, you need to 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 think about languages and uh, and frameworks. So I think we can list six steps. You need to list all of your requirements uh, you want to achieve, cross-browser testing, cross-mobile testing, security, CI, which tool you need. Uh, I think it's also a discussion about uh, the budget. Uh, if you can you use open source or uh, commercial uh, frameworks, you, you need to define the, the technology stack mobile, browser, Android, iOS, languages. Uh, you need to analyze and compare each tool. And finally, make a proof of concept. If you are experiment, uh, if you have some skill with uh, Python and uh, the application is uh, in the React Native, maybe you, you need to make um, a proof of concept with JavaScript to, to, to see if you are uh, confident. Yeah. yeah. If, <laughs> if you are confident uh, with the JavaScript languages. It's, um, so. Okay. Oh, yeah, it makes perfect sense. It's like currently we have a, to sum it up, if I got you correctly, we have a huge variety of the things that we actually can use. And it should really depend on the team project and company setup that you have in order to choose it. Okay, uh, guys, anybody, girls, anybody wants to add something to this one? Yeah, I think I totally agree with Thomas. And when I talk to uh, yeah, when I talk to clients because we are um, with, we are like selling Jenny Motion and it's around like Android and to talk a lot about mobile automated testing. And when we talk to a lot of people, they don't usually go right. Uh, choosing one solution, they are doing, they are evaluating different uh, different solutions, and then uh, they yeah they they, they kind of uh, analyze everything, compare tools, budget, uh, technology stack around there yeah, for the team. It's a, a good one that everyone will use, and not try somewhere when you just buy it. Uh, so yeah, so for me, it's like to you have like a really let's say ins, uh, um, people just don't go directly in one tool. They just test a lot of things and then they make the decision and a decision. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Karim, do you want to add anything to this? I think no matter the industry you're in, no matter if you're testing front end or back end, it's or infrastructure, it's hard. You need to have a good strategy and it's usually only takes a few days to realize this one tool you thought could do everything will not in fact cover everything there's there's always a step back that we need to take and realize that, hey, you know what? We're getting 90% coverage. That's great. That's 90% that we didn't have before. But those remaining 10%, they can really be troublesome. Uh, okay. Okay, cool. So uh, uh, it, it makes uh, perfect sense because right now um, a lot of the... Um, solutions that we have we are like market is really fast so we need to pick valuable solutions like i said by picking the correct strategy and it's not really it's it's funny to say it in the trends discussion that it's not only about trends but also about really thinking about your project and all the aspects um okay um and let's uh think a bit about something different uh, if we're talking about the way we kind of run our tests uh, if we have chosen something like we decided i know i don't want to work with uh, javascript i want to work with something else um what about like where we run our tests do you think like it's this one was going to be first for or like do you think we're going to have this cloud future like running everything in clouds or it's it's going to just die in some time yeah i think we're not there yet like everything in the cloud 
uh, when when I talk to a lot of people, they just say, yeah, sometimes they are just just looking for cloud because they have they have everything on premise locally, and sometimes they see that they, are, they have troubles uh, maintaining set of things, and they want to try to go on the cloud, but usually sometimes when when for years you have been in the, um, having everything locally, you get you know the security teams, or sometimes they just say, yeah, we are not there yet for the cloud because we are for in terms of data leaks and etc. They sometimes they just block everything, but we see that for years we have more and more people um, going into cloud. But yeah, we are not there yet, and I think that uh, we have some polls and. Um, I think that you, uh, Evina, you uh, you just published them. Just wanted to ask you what are are you already uh, using uh, tools on the cloud? Are you using a mix of this? And also, if maybe if uh, yesterday you went to our talk, we discussed about yeah cloud uh, mobile testing, uh, and we see that yeah people are going local cloud. Um, but yes, um, and especially uh, uh, I'm talking. Um, I'm going to talk about. Uh, Android because uh, this is like the, uh, the thing that I, I know the most, but uh, especially with um, a very fragmented uh, Android market, we need to test on different kind of configurations, uh, Android versions. And what we see is that people are choosing to run the test on the cloud um, yeah, to, to be able to, to run um, their tests on uh, f um, devices that are available like uh, on the go really fast. Um, and and also to 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 get out of the hassle of um, setting up everything, maintaining, and to to also have all the teams. Sometimes you have people um, uh, in different location, and especially you know with COVID, you have lots of teams that are spread out everywhere, and so that everyone can access to uh, the all the tools uh, could be CI or, the, uh, or 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 devices directly. Uh, from wherever they are. So maybe, yeah, maybe the COVID gave, yeah, did like a, a big change on how we work together and maybe saying, yeah, before I could do everything locally. Now maybe we need to move to the cloud because of the new way that now we work. Uh, yeah, people spreading around, you know, even if this, um, this, this conference is virtual and have everyone, uh, talking from a lot of countries so the, the this this cloud thing is uh, really changing change, changing everything now mm, okay uh, in, guys anybody wants to also add something because i totally agree with that and know about it unsurprisingly i agree with this as well I mean, with mobile devices testing in the cloud just makes more sense if you're a small company you can't it's financially irresponsible to buy hundreds of devices and test especially if you know that you only need them at certain parts, right? Spin them up in the cloud, everyone can use them. And when you're done for the day, release them for the next group. So somebody else has to pay the cost for that. Much better. Uh, yeah, uh, Thomas, do we want to listen? No, it's, uh, I agree with Elio too. And uh, what, I, what I see is um, uh, as a QA manager, I have, um, I've discussed with other uh, QA manager from other company, and uh, one of the uh, one of the um, the reason the, they didn't go to the uh, to the cloud before it's because uh, they have device farm into the uh, the building at the office uh, to to test as a real user. Um, your, uh, their application, uh, but now mobile devices uh, on the cloud are uh, almost the same as uh, physical devices without the manufacturer uh, uh, layout. Uh, and with the COVID, uh, everyone uh, was uh, were at home didn't have access to the uh, to the physical devices and it will be uh, expensive for the company to buy uh, one to 10 devices per developers or per uh, testers. So the cloud 
is a good solution for everyone. Yeah, it, it really makes sense, especially like uh, for small companies or small startups, you know, who are starting just and they don't have a huge budgets. Or especially if you're running your test automation as a POC, uh, then uh, you don't have like a chance to buy 10 devices. And it's it should be a great solution. And I really believe that a lot, of, a lot more of such solutions will appear on the market because of this uh, like big need. Um, and I, I would also um, wanted to discuss uh, the part about uh, web automation maybe a bit, uh, because currently I think a lot of uh, automation is kind of already a trend. It's like a hype to have automation in every product, even if you don't understand why do we need this automation there. But so many people already have this. And I think that the next kind of challenge for tooling that we are getting is the scalability and the uh, like the budgets because uh like on our side in Wix we run around like thousands of tests and they appeared so fast and, and we run in lambdas we run them in parallel and we really think a lot about the cost and about the uh you know scalability so we'll have uh, thousands more tests soon and we are choosing the technology according to that so what do you think about scalability about the budget? do you know about some tools to look at that can give us such or maybe some I don't know some advices around it anything like any anybody can start yeah maybe I can start um yeah there are many many tools out there now so sometimes yeah having many tools it's a good it's a good thing but really hard to choose uh but yeah when we want to talk about scalability of course you will uh, think about the cloud. It's the main thing that is the main uh, uh, the main subject for for today. Uh, but yeah, if I if I'm going to talk about um, mobile uh, mobile testing, when you want to achieve uh, great scalability, you will go for a big cloud um, virtual devices. There are many many tools out there. Uh, you have uh, tools that do both physical and virtual. Um, you have a browser stack if you are into the let's say web uh, web, um, web testing. Uh, you have uh, Source Labs. Uh, you have of course Genymotion for virtual devices if you do on, on Android. Uh, but yeah, there are, there are many many tools. Um, and uh, yeah, <laughs> and yeah, in terms of costing, uh, usually um, yeah, physical devices can be uh, can be a bit expensive, but you need to do like. Uh, both mix of virtual and physical devices if I'm going to talk about mobile automated testing. But yeah, I'm sure I, for me, I, I, there are many tools and I wouldn't recommend, let's say, just go with one. It really depends on, yeah, what, uh, what you want to set up everything in your company, depending uh, if I, uh, Thomas was talking about the skills of the people, uh, uh, in terms of also costing, because at the, at the, at the, um, the one who will decide will be, let's say, your boss or your your company. So <laughs> you can you can be like you know the 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 the, the, the guy that did all the testing and saying yeah I want this this uh, this solution but at the end it won't be you who will be purchasing you know the product <laughs> and sometimes it can be you know a bit frustrating that say yeah I think that this is like the best solution for me but. Yeah, at the end, maybe your company, you will, you will say no, <laughs> and you will need to look out for another, let's say, let's say less cost, uh, less expensive solution or something like this. So for me, I wouldn't, let's say, go for this kind of solution. You just need to go what, uh, what solution there are out there and then just mm -hmm. try to find the best, the, the mm -hmm. best one for your company and in terms of cost and mm -hmm. scalability. It's like a real, you know, expectation reality advice because we love to read and write and listen for panel discussions about trends. But uh, in the end, we need to think um, on the one hand on what your, like you said, your managers and what they see as uh, like value of the automation that you're going to have. And maybe if you want to have something like a higher budget and, and such, maybe try with something, some solutions that go trial in the beginning to show the value and then to invest more on that, not to go all in from the day one. And uh, and Karim, what would you say about um, like the DevOps and infrastructure part? I know a lot of, um, a lot of actually test automation engineers nowadays are getting those uh, DevOps skills as a must have. 
like we're becoming software development engineer in this and, and all such. So what would you think will go there? Like what will change or what change already? Like, how do you see it? It's an amazing trend to see, right? It's, it's people upskilling and getting new skills and getting into a different type of their job and therefore getting a better understanding of the whole testing flow. I think that's, to me, that's always been the biggest thing. I started out as a front-end engineer, became an infrastructure engineer. Now I talk about infrastructure software. And every time I look back, I'm like, man, I would love to have all those front-end testing tools available. Because for us, I'll, let me give you a quick example. We're de deploying an app um, that runs on AWS or something, uh, which means we need to deploy a domain, we need to have networking, we need to have a database, uh, we need to have a server to run it on. As an infrastructure engineer, I can test those five things and make sure they are running, but then I need to deploy the application. That's something maybe I don't have any understanding of. So I need to work together with my team and only through the collaboration can I actually determine like, hey, is the thing that I deployed that my test says is okay, actually okay? It's, uh, it, it's great to see more people flocking towards the area of DevOps and understanding that we're not going to win. No one of us is going to win if we keep a silo mentality. We all need to just collaborate more. Okay, that's the great one. Actually, it's uh, already moving us closer to the, uh, you know, people aspect of the trends. Although I want to ask one last question for everyone. Like, um, I recently hear in a lot of conferences this, uh, you know, trend to talk about the AI, <laughs> a lot of AI everywhere, the AI. So um, which solutions, uh, like, let's say, if I want to search for some solution, or even if I want to develop some solution, because we also have now a lot of people who contribute to open source frameworks. And this is like one of the ways you can grow and grow like uh, publicly. So um, what do you think? Um, what are the solutions in terms of the AI, maybe like the ideas to develop in future that will appear in future? Or what do you think? Yeah, I'll, I'll go first. Uh, uh, yeah, sure. So one thing I like to do is um, in, in operations, you have AI mainly used for logging and, and figuring out where your application is struggling and did uh, deciding what a pattern is that you as a human might not see. Beautiful part there is uh, the machine will identify, hey, there's a pattern, you're losing customers, but you wouldn't be able to see that because the drop-off is just small enough. Help have that system write the test case for you in the sense that, hey, you're seeing this. So you now know what to monitor for and what to test for. I think AI at the level of writing the full test, we're not there yet. I think that's that's good because there's so much stuff in there that we know because we built the system and it's hard to determine all the edge cases. But there's also basic flows, right? Like logging in, adding to cart. Uh, I think yesterday there was a really good uh, example. Somebody clicked the uh, buy now button on an empty cart and the site crashed. That's <laughs> stuff we can automate for. It's It's beautiful when we use it as an enhancement tool but not as a replacement tool. I think it comes back to um, uh, what we talked about earlier by saying that a single tool will never solve the whole question. Yeah, it makes a perfect sense. Uh, Elena or Thomas, do you want to add anything? No, I think I totally agree with you. Uh, even when we talk about automated testing, you can't automate everything. And that's why you have exploratory testing when you still need to do, uh, let's say, manual testing to think about all, yeah, all the all the other test cases that you that automated come to, so mm -hmm. yeah, totally uh, join carry on that. Mm -hmm. Okay, Thomas, anything from your side? Uh, we're just like we're agreeing to everything that everybody says. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, I just speaking about. Uh, uh, community open source uh, tools are involved day after day, and uh, I think I cloud today is uh, mobile testing was uh, the question yesterday. Cloud is today, but uh, hi hi will be the next uh, trend for uh, 
for mobile test automation because we need to to improve the the speed of your test. We need to improve the um, the fiability. Uh, we need to to be more secure because mobile uh, is everywhere now. So yeah, I don't. I, I think it's my opinion, but uh, how what we what uh, will happen? I don't know. <laughs> Okay, you know, it, it makes uh, it makes perfect sense in about the open source, I think, uh, for um, a lot of the companies, uh, like we did with the detox, we uh, like an open source, so it's, um, it's a great chance, I think, for uh, frameworks that was born inside, you know, to become bigger, and the uh, cool question uh, from Karim, like, in chat, um, I think bringing AI into this is something that we kind of should look into. Uh, maybe about making tests uh, smarter in terms of flakiness, because flakiness is something we suffer, uh, I think, the most from, uh, about understanding if your test is fine or not. And uh, especially the running time, which is uh, super critical uh, when you want to have this fast feedback loop. Uh, so um, once again, totally agree to all of you. Uh, and um, like I said, it's moving us a bit to the people aspect. Uh, what I wanted, like really fast, I want to start with general thing. Like, uh, if I um, am growing now as test automation engineer, what are the specific extra skills that we didn't have before that we think you need to grow? Like, we talked to a minute ago about DevOps skills, for example. Like, uh, I don't know, um, Edinor, Thomas, uh, do you think about there are some extra skills that we need to grow 2022? Yeah, you want me to start? No. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, so I think, uh, yeah, now, um, yeah, I think that in, in the in, in the attendees, there are a lot of automation engineers and I think you are maybe months, mostly like you need to be you have like to have soft skills what i call about it that you have to be a uh, creative curious uh and also how to work in teams because usually you are not alone and yeah thomas talked a lot about uh, working in teams and yeah thomas here is our sql lead and he's an only writing test but he's thinking broader and trying to find what is the best um, testing strategy for, for the company. And yeah, for me, having soft skills is really important and you need to always look what's out there. And I think that most of you are just going, you are going to the conference and trying to, to, to learn a lot of things to have like more, uh, more material to think broader and yeah, to be always keeping learning. And I think that, um, uh, you need to be really to be curious and and see what's there and and we see that tools are evolving and if you are not let's say uh, stay behind. yes yeah you can stay behind and and try uh, using tools that are not that now efficient than than, than before yeah yes, uh, yes, I agree uh, I uh, just would uh... For my, for my experiences, uh, I was in charge of writing tests and I was focused on it before, but since a uh, few years, I, I think about where and how to run uh, this test. And uh, since uh, three years, I think, I discovered some tools uh, to, to, to create a test infrastructure. And uh, I can uh, talk about uh, Terraform uh, it was a great tool to uh, to deploy uh, and um, some de devices on AWS, uh, GCP, or other uh, provider. And it's my experience. So you need to to be creative, like uh, like uh, Elinor said. Mm -hmm. uh, Karim, you want to add anything? I, I do. Uh, I, I love the question. What kind of skills do you need as a testing engineer is, it really comes down to, first of all, the answer is all of them. You need all skills because all skills will be beneficial, but focus on what brings you joy. My background is engineer, uh, infrastructure engineering. So I'd be most interested in seeing what happens when a user in a mobile app taps the like button and how that translates into the database and actually making sure it's translated correctly. 
but maybe you're interested in joining a remote session with your support team to see what the user is seeing. You know, we've got tools for that. We can join a user live even if they are a thousand kilometers away. It's perfect. There's so many different aspects that we can learn from and understand things. Maybe when you're on the infrastructure side, you're going to learn about networking. Maybe that's not interesting, but maybe going back to the soft skills, you join your support team, you join one of those sessions, you have to deal with the empathy of the user. Because you built this tool, you tested this tool, you're excited about this tool, but your user is trying to use it and it's not working and it's really frustrating them. And you have to deal with that um, situation by hopefully being kind, by hopefully understanding that the only reason that person is frustrated is because they're excited about using your tool, but it's not working. There's, there is so many different aspects that you can focus on. My main advice is focus on what brings you joy, where your passion is, and dive deep. Dive really deep. That will help your career, will help your um, personal happiness, work-life balance, and it will help your company. Everyone yeah. wins. Oh, it, it was like, you know, a life strategy uh, thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's. Um, I just want to summarize what uh, you all guys just said. Uh, a lot of, um, it's not already about just writing tests. It's about solving some challenges that you've met on your way and about doing it with the curiosity and with doing what really makes you, you know, passionate about it. So, um, I also like heard a lot from uh, all of you about uh, working with different roles, like diving deeper into something. And uh, like Eleanor said, it really requires a soft skill. It really requires a collaboration skill. So um, how do you think like, um, if let's say we conclude that uh, we need to not just write tests, we need to do more and to do more in which areas we want to grow. And if let's say I don't have a skill to uh, do something with uh, DevOps part and I like, but I have DevOps, let's say, and I need to collaborate, or if I'm not sure about how to write tests, but uh, my developers do know how to do that. So what about collaboration? Uh, do you think we're going to be writing tests all together, like, you know, working on one test automation? Or it's more about learning your own skills, you know, waiting, learning DevOps, and only then setting everything up. So one engineer or many, uh, what do you think? Uh, maybe Karen can start. We're all engineers, right? No matter yeah, if we're absolutely. testing front end, back end, uh, yeah, you know, I, I mean, uh, do we, uh, are we going to do a lot of collaboration around test automation, like developers writing desk, QA is writing desk, like DevOps is helping with the infra part, or it's more about being like a cross-functional soldier, you know, that knows how to do everything by himself and doing it like by himself. I think generally I prefer, and, and this is not necessarily a trend, but I prefer teams where we all collaborate, a uh, test engineer understands how to write a proper test in a sense that how do you extract business value from something? My skill may be in the area of making sure your server is online, which is important because only then can you run your application, but maybe that's not necessarily what we need to bring back to the business to show them that it's working. So by working together, we can maybe make those tests a little less flaky, a little more expansive. And every time you bring in somebody new, they're going to see something that you missed because for you, it's so common, right? So it's, yeah, it's multi-skilled. Yeah, it, it, it makes sense. Okay. And uh, what would you say guys? Yeah. Our... Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You can't be an expert of everything. If you try to learn, yeah, each thing you want, yeah, it won't be efficient. So that's why yeah, I, I joined Karen at, you need to work all together. Even as a, a precision engineer, I know that I have some technical skills, but I'm not like an expert on everything. So, and I know that in, in the company, I, I know that this one will be the expert on this particular subject, etc. And I, yeah, you, you know that some, sometimes you have like a safe pride saying, yeah, I, I'm afraid of asking dumb questions. Uh, because I don't know, because I don't know that uh, uh, I don't want to be someone judging me that I ask this and this is like a dumb question. So yeah, don't be afraid to ask questions and to be like proactive in collaborating and uh, everyone so that 
it will be beneficial uh, for, for the company and also for yourself. You are carrying you're talking about joy. I think like, yeah, in my, in my own opinion, uh, I love collaborating with everyone in my company because it brings me joy. And also I know that we can learn from each other and yeah, together we are more, you are stronger than uh, being, yeah, being, being alone. Uh, Thomas, you want to add anything to this one? Uh, the, the collaboration uh, is, is the key in uh, the most company because uh, a company don't do uh, make uh, um, one only one product. For example, at Genie Mobile, we have uh, a lot of products, uh, which one is based for desktop application, one is based on the cloud, one is based on uh, a provider. Uh, and each development team uh, has a focus, a focus on these uh, products. But the QA team is transverse. So we need to have uh, skills about uh, browser, we need to have skills about operating system like Mac OS, Windows, Linux. We need to have skills about uh, provider like uh, AWS, GCP. Uh, we can't know everything. So as I can uh, say, it's we are multi-skills. <laughs> Uh, okay, okay. Uh, I uh, I would also add that probably when we are um, um, when we have all those people who can help us with some specific challenges, like example like DevOps, for example, we still need to be um, T shape a bit, like all of you said, right? Just to understand at least what you're going to request. So it's. Um, I think we're a bit moving to this. Um, that's what I see in my company and some other big companies. We are moving to this uh, kind of quality assistance model when uh, QA is a bit more like, um, you know, collaborating and orchestrating the things that is around him. So you basically have many aspects of what you need in order to for your test automation to run and to be effective. And you have different people you can request help from. So you need at least to understand some basics in order to know uh, what to request from them, like to give requirements, uh, to uh, you know, to get the correct solution in the end, even if you are not implementing it by yourself. So uh, I totally agree that you cannot learn everything, but at least probably some basic knowledge would be like a must-have, so you will understand what you need for your specific case. Uh, okay, uh, cool. So I think I want to have one last little thing before we switch to the questions. So um, first, people, if you are there, please encourage you to add your questions to the Q&A if you have them and to participate in polls that we've published. Um, guys, one advice what you want to give people now to be in trend uh let's say in a year or two uh to grow like one advice from each of you please uh, let's start from Eleanor. yeah <laughs> yeah really think about the advice but yeah i think that yeah we were talking about a lot of subjects cloud collaborating so yeah i think what you will need to look for uh, i don't know where you are in uh, in in testing what kind of tools you use but yeah i think that if I need to to give some advice, collaborate. Yeah, I think that was the, 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 the collaborate with each other and find the tools that you need all together. Uh, nice. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, okay, uh, Karim, what would you advise? I mean, honestly, what Ice Ice Baby said. Um, you know, uh, collaborate and listen. Uh, it comes. To, sorry, Vanilla Ice. Uh, the song is obviously Ice Ice Baby. Um, think about your technology and think about making it boring. Exciting technology is great for a conference talk. It is not great when it fails. Make things super boring so they are easy and easily testable. And only add fancy stuff and experimental stuff where it absolutely makes sense for you and your business. Okay, okay, great one. Uh, cool, thanks. And uh, what about uh, Tomas, what would you advise? As we, as we talk about testing, I think uh, for me, it's to test your idea. Uh, 
you need to try to try to try and uh, find the good language for you the good tools the good uh yes test your idea oh it, it it makes a perfect sense because i really think that nowadays uh, a lot of people are looking for uh, big uh, solutions that have big communities and something that is like uh, ready to work with. But eventually, uh, the best things appear when we experiment on our own projects and developing our own interesting things. So like uh, testing and uh, creating maybe some POCs, like we said before, could be a nice thing to grow the market also. because. I believe that uh, we are talking about the trends now that appear on the market, but trends appear depending on the customer needs, right? Eleanor, uh, like you're, I think the best person, I, I hope you agree with me here. Uh, but uh, so our needs uh, develop the market, develop the tools that we have. And we as engineers that collaborate and contribute to tools actually also develop them. So uh, whatever we build, whatever we experiment with is something that will be there in a year. So I, um, my little advice will be probably for people not to be afraid and to go to those communities to contribute to tools to build their own uh, and to go to talk about them in conferences to make them public and probably it will be a great solution that will become a trend in a year um okay so uh let's now we have uh, around three minutes more we have only one question actually in the q a so um let's discuss this one uh there is a question should you ever switch from one program language to another for example you saw a cool test framework but it's now available on the language that you used to write your end-to-end -end tests so are there any tips like if we should switch or we should keep using the same what do you think anybody uh, i can try to answer um i i think you, you, as I said, you you must to try the language to see if you are confident with that. Uh, you need to see if uh, you have some people in your company to to help you to understand uh, the the language or the test framework. Um, if if it's uh, community uh, tools, you can ask uh, to. To, to see if the, your language uh, will be um, um, yes. popular, uh, you mean? Yes, maybe uh, in the future, if, uh, if you can use your language with uh, this uh, testing tools. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't uh, have any tips, but just try. Uh, okay, yeah, you, you cannot know before you try it for your own project. Um, okay, uh, Eleanor, what would you add for this one? Mm, yeah, I think there's kind of a learning curve when you want to just test the framework. I think you need just time to time box and see what is the uh, what is the the time that you can have. You you have your daily your your daily work. You need to make things work to the QA. You can't do just all your work is testing a framework. You need to find the the right balance and just. I think you need to time box it, uh, and yeah, and as Thomas said, uh, try to if you have uh, other people in your company that have this kind of skill, you can ask for sure. Uh, so, you yeah. so, so you can kind of work long term, so somebody can. Help yeah, you. it's something that you need to work long term, but also time box it and talk to your yeah. manager about it for sure. Because <laughs> <laughs> so you can you can do things on your own. You you, you know you are kind of excited about it. I want to. To, to, to call this test, to call this, um, let's say, fancy framework. But at some point, you will have your manager telling you, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it makes perfect sense. And yeah. Karim, uh, one-liner from you, I have less than a minute, I really want you to say something. I think the right tool is the one that solves your problems. Uh, if you need to have another testing framework to cover a few more percent of your application, it's worth it. Nice, nice. I would only add one thing that usually uh, I suggested to switch people to another language when it was switching to your developer's language, because it, it would be the same advice that uh, Thomas and Eleanor did. But usually when you have audience who are developers who are always close to you that can help you with that and you can collaborate and you have more resources, 
it always I think makes sense and learning something new always makes sense so why not um okay we have 20 seconds and we are done uh thanks a lot for uh inputs uh i think it was like super interesting for me actually hope for you also to talk about those trends and um thanks a lot and good luck to people and good luck to you and your next talks hope we'll see each other one more time thank you very bye. much everyone for joining bye bye, bye. And now we just smile. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. And